Hiya fishy folks and happy Sunday fun day to you. It's time, finally, pond season. Welcome back to Michael's Fish Room, fishy folks. Pond season is finally here. Uh, the weather here in South Jersey has been legitimately crazy. I'm pretty sure Mother Nature is smoking crack because last week, uh, a week ago Saturday, it snowed. Uh, I was on my way home from Connecticut and we were in New York City and blizzard-like conditions for about 10 minutes. And the snow actually sticked onto the grass areas, which means it was pretty much 32 degrees. It was crazy. And then at the beginning of last week, overnight lows in the 30s, so I didn't even ship any fish. But this week, the temperature started climbing. And then yesterday, Saturday, it was 83 degrees and gorgeous. Of course, Sunday morning now, as I'm filming this video, 53 degrees. A little chilly. And you might be saying to yourself, but, but my 53 degrees ambient temperature is colder than you said you were going to put ponds out. That's true. But... I did something a little cray cray, if you will. A little crazy. Actually, it's not that crazy. Other YouTubers have done it. Uh, Lucas did it and has done it. He keeps ponds out year round in Indiana in the snow and stuff. But I put a heater in, in the tub behind me. I have one of the Rubbermaid uh, 150 gallon tubs and uh, I put a heater in it. And uh, I also have some other ponds set up, just water moving and making sure everything works, leveling and so on and so forth, which we're going to go over. So let's talk about the pond. There is a Marineland 400 watt heater in there. I like the Marineland heaters. Um, I find that most heaters, unless you go super expensive, they fail sometimes. <coughs> what I like about Marineland, because I've had one fail in Chewy's tank, as you know, I emailed or I, yeah, I emailed and I had another one sent to me within that week. So I did end up buying one to make sure Chewy was healthy, but I had a spare, boom, goes in the tub. <clears throat> so ambient temperature is 50 degrees. We're gonna see what the water temperature was yesterday as I was checking, because you know you have to you have to check the data, right? So I set up the tubs a couple days ago and I've been checking water temperatures to see how they fluctuate. And uh, yesterday, these tubs right here, my waterfall system where I had the mutt guppies last year uh, was in the low 70s and the, the tub was 84, which is what I had the heater set at. It's a little surprised because that's a big body of water for that, that heater to work, but it was working. Um, we're gonna put some plants <clears throat> in this tub for the guppies to hide in. We have some some of this stuff, which um, I think is water sprite, and, and my boy Keith from KGE Aquatics sent it to me. Of course, we have some Java moss, and there's some other stuff in here that I just grabbed out of the Mutt Guppy tank. That water is really cold, by the way. Uh, and then let's talk about the actual guppies. So, in a tub like this, um, you know, last year, I think in these 60 gallons, I started with, I don't know, five or six females, and one or two males, and that's pretty much what I have now. I picked my breeders yesterday. Uh, actually, they've been in this dip and pour overnight. Oh my God, they survived? Yes, yes, they survived. It's just like shipping fish. Although, and uh, because I'm in the middle of a shipping cycle, um, these guys haven't been fed since Friday. But uh, and you might be saying to yourself, what's, what's a shipping cycle, oh, Mike? What, what do you mean? Well, when I ship fish on uh, Monday, I start fasting Saturday morning, and I start bagging and boxing Sunday. Actually, today's Sunday. I'm going to be packing fish all day. I have like 65 orders. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But uh, anyway, let's get back to this. So these are the guppies. I don't know how easily, how, how clearly this is coming out, but basically we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven females. One of them is kind of young. One of them is probably right at breeding size. The other ones are ginormous and are getting ready to pop. Uh, and then we have two different males. We have uh, a yellow cobra mutt. It was a yellow cobra I culled because I think uh, it had like a red spot in the tail. Um, and then I have one of those Diablo guppies that my boy Joe sent me that I thought were jacked up that wasn't jacked up at all. Uh, just because I know that's new genetics. 
Um, so, oh, and there's one red mutt. Uh, it looks like it, it probably, it's got a red tail, magenta, and purple body. I love those kind. I don't know. You can't really see, I'm sure. Dippin' Pour is not the best to look at. Anyway, so we'll we'll uh, we'll get those acclimated into the tank, and and you know we'll see what happens. So I'm sure you want to see my setup. I know I didn't tell you to do so already, but I'm assuming you already have your snack and beverage. If you don't, now would be a good time because we're gonna go grab your snack and beverage. Stand by. We'll talk about the ponds. Looking at. All right, fishy folks, we're back. And first, my two big Rubbermaid ponds are 100 gallon, not 150. Sorry, <clears throat> um, but this one uh, still empty. That one uh, has a new style netting on it, which I'll go over in a minute. And then, of course, the the waterfall pond. Same setup I had last year. I'm going to do uh, one thing different. I'm going to cover the uh, the sump, if you will, uh, just to make sure we don't get any any nymphs in there. So if you ask me, dragonfly nymphs are the worst thing for outdoor ponds. The biggest enemy, if you will, of your fry production. Now, if you're just doing outdoor ponds to look nice or you you want to you know you want to add some some fertilizer natural fertilizer to the uh <clears throat> to the setup for your plants then it doesn't really matter but if you're looking like me and breed for profit you want to hold as many fries as you can anyway here is the 90 gallon intex square uh kitty pool that i had the um, Plecos in last year. I will be making a cover for it this year and trying again. I still have to level it. I don't know if you can see, but it is sort of cattywampus this way. Um, I had a, a, a guy come and clean out the backyard, and, and when he was all done, he said he didn't want to touch this area because the ponds, and I'm like, they, they were empty and upside down. You could have easily just cleaned out the leaves. So now I got to do it. Uh, so hopefully we'll clean it up. Uh, you should take bets to see if I actually do it, but Let's talk about the waterfall system over here. So it's these um, Laguna totes. They're 60 gallons. These are the same same nets I used last year. Uh, it's just uh, pond netting that's tripled up. And then I have these um, <clears throat> banister uh, balusters. Is that what they're called? They're they're like spigots. They're they're these things for the the deck. By the way, new stairs. Had a carpenter friend come over and build me some stairs. And uh, they're fantastic. Anyway, <coughs> I'm fine. <clears throat> so uh, that's covering this one. This is a different style uh, lid that I made last year. This is light diffuser. You can find it at, at any of the big box stores. And I just secured it together because it wasn't wide enough. And then I used that to keep it uh, from bending and also as a handle. Um, and this system is pretty simple. It's just like last year, but I'll go over it again. We have this 20-ish gallon uh, sump, and there's uh, the Eco 396 pump, the best pump available in the hobby. It's cheap. I learned about it from Mike, the guy with the PhD, who I can't remember his channel or the last name. I'll put a link so you can check it out. But uh, years ago, like five years ago, I learned about that pump, and I bought one and used it in the fish room, you know, as a utility pump. But now I use it in my pond system. I'll put a link for that pump. If you're going to do anything outside, buy that pump. It's cheap. It's fantastic. Anyway, uh, it's got that flexible tube, and then it goes to a pipe that runs along the back of the tanks up to there. And then uh, the water just overflows down. And that's it. And a, it's a, it's approximately a 100-gallon system, maybe a little more, you know, 60, 60, 20, which is 140. But, you know, it's not, the water's not full and... I'm guessing about 120 gallons for the system. Anyway, if you look closely, you can see these aren't 100% level. Uh, I've been working on leveling them. When I built these, I uh, leveled them as I built them. So the bases were level, which meant everything on top of them was pretty level. Uh, this year, I didn't even think about that. And I just put the tubs in, put water in, and started flowing to see how it flowed. Had some issues with some algae stuck in both overflows. So they were slow, flowing very slow. That's not slowing very flow, that's flowing very slow. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, I did have to level these side to side and I do want them a little slope this way. So what I use to level them are these shims. I'll show you here. They're just shims and they're used in, uh, in carpentry and uh, 
like like home building to shim like door sill door frames window sills and so yeah here they are then i have this cheap little level i don't know it was in my tool bag but it you know it works and so you can see it's you know it's pitching downward this way so in order if i were to level this i would have to lift the left side up a little bit like that much but really not a big deal drop the level who cares um all right let's talk about this new netting last year my friend lisa who uh, lives in south jersey and also is a guppy breeder um we met and sh for some guppies and she brought me this netting and it's i think it's the netting from either a uh trampoline or I remember saying something about wrestling, so I don't know if it's like an official, uh, like, MMA ring netting or something, but um, it's a little fine. I'm not sure <clears throat> all the bugs that I want are going to get through, but we'll see. I know some bugs will get through. So this is my first attempt. Basically, I did the same thing I did over here. I wrapped the, the wood in wire ties. I haven't even cut them yet. And so they, they create the weight to keep it taut. And then I don't have anything over the side, so I think I'm going to have to have to add stuff to the side to make sure it, it weighs down. So I don't know if you can see. Well, let's let's just move this for now. Okay. So I have a sponge filter in here. It's one of the sponge filters that's driven by, you know, an airstone, and of course the airstone isn't in it because it keeps coming out. So I've decided I'm going to secure it or just leave it in there. Uh, and then there's the heater. 400 watt marine land heater link down below if you're interested of course it's an affiliate link so just think about it and i make about a gajillion dollars um there's also some leaf litter already in this tub you can see somehow there's duckweed i don't know how there could possibly be duckweed but there is must have come from the filter actually now that i think about it but this will probably be covered with duckweed but duckweed is great for a pond for two reasons one it will act as a natural filter it'll suck up all the nitrates um, and two, it will provide cover from the sun as it grow as it uh, grows and fills in. It'll shade shade the tub. Now, this netting should also shade the tub a little bit because these are in I don't know, probably 80, 65 to 80 uh, percent full sun. Um, not 100 percent, but some. I don't know if you can see, but I looked in here yesterday. And there was all kinds of stuff swimming. No, you can't see. Not that big a deal. Little tiny worms and stuff. I'm I'm, I'm excited for the fish to start eating. Uh, lots of lots of um, mosquito larvae. So uh, now let's take a look at this tub. This tub over here already has water in it, but just a little. That's rainwater, folks. I put the tubs out about two weeks ago to collect rainwater, so I don't have to fill so much. And uh, you might be saying to yourself, but but Mike, it's rainwater so much softer than your regular water. Yes, if you don't know, rainwater is very soft, and if you have hard water inside, your rainwater will be soft, and that could cause a, a problem. But, you know, you put it in the tub, you mix it with the other water, you let it sit for a while, it's fine. Um, plus, guppies are much more hardy than we give them credit for. Anyway, this is one of those tubs I got last year. <clears throat> I'll put a link to that video where uh, it had these these bulkheads here, and I had to, to seal them um, as cheap as possible. And uh, it had the T's and they're glued in. So basically I had to put the caps on. One of these caps leaks. Uh, so I have to figure that out. Um, the other thing, which uh, I want to show you over here, and I purposely didn't tighten it so I could remember to show you. You can see how that's dripping. The bulkhead is dripping. <clears throat> Anytime you're setting up a pond from last year that you had bulkheads, check all your connections. I didn't check. I saw it was leaking uh, when I put the water in. I'm like, eh let me leave it so I can film it and that's what I did uh, as a reminder so you know call me out the next time you see this video if I haven't tightened it but um, yeah so that's that we got the net we got the all right let's acclimate the guppies and put them in okay are, are we ready oh god I almost spilled them here we go we're gonna we're gonna acclimate them oh no I plopped and dropped instead that's right folks plop and drop they've been sitting that dipping port inside for about you know overnight because I was supposed to do this yesterday you'll see the blooper at the end but I came out here yesterday set everything up to do the video and all of a sudden I heard merengue from my neighbor's backyard a diagonal neighbor actually over there them uh, they were having they have a pool they had just opened it and they were having such a good time and I was out here like you know head bobbing to the music but then I'm like well if it's actually like a real song then 
uh, YouTube is going to get mad if it's in the background. So I didn't film. I worked on the ponds a little more. I worked on my homework for math a little more. God, so much homework for math. That's right, college student here. All right, I'm I'm rambling now. All right, folks, they are loving all the all the bugs and stuff. I can see them eating. Oh, we got to put the we got to put the that water is really cold, but shouldn't make a difference. All right, fish folks, let me show you the temperature of the water. Um, we got my non-contact temperature gun. So this is 78, and let's see, you can see it. And then if we look at this tub without the heater, 60. So that heater's that heater's got it up 18 degrees. Let me get closer to the heater, 78. And then if we go over here, 70. That's pretty good, 78 all around. Um, and that's fine, 78 is fine. Yesterday when I tempted, uh, the, the Laguna totes were like 74. 75 and then this one was 84 <clears throat> so temperature swings are normal um, I, personally I believe it's it helps make the guppies stronger getting used to that temperature swing you know um, I know a lot of discus breeders as an example you know they have zero nitrates in their tanks because they do 100% water changes daily some crazy crap like that you know and and their temperatures are perfect and yes their discus are slightly more well, not slightly they're more sensitive than guppies, but you got to give guppies, you got to make them strong because I, I think a lot of guppies from the big breeders and the, the, the farms in Asia, um, they're just weak. They're, they're weak, especially those designer strains, I find. Anyway, babbling again, that does it for the mutt guppy pond. Actually, just ponds in general. We're, you know, we're going to be working. This week is supposed to be rain almost every day and be cold. Not cold, but in the 60s so hopefully next weekend it'll be nice i'll be able to get some more ponds out i'm considering buying some more heaters just so i can get started the original plan was to put the heater in here because this is also going to be muffed up these and then i'm like I, I would need at least two heaters um i would put a heater in, i would have put a heater in here and a heater in the sump so that 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 got heated water and this got heated water but <clears throat> you know i decided to do it in here Anyway, instead, and it's working great. So, um, I'll go over my my pond setup with the mechanics probably in another video. But you know, as you can see, it's still a disaster. There's there's lines everywhere. The the plug that I have running is just strewn about. So, we won't make an eater because there will be you know my family out here too. We don't want them to trip and fall into a guppy pond. So. All right, folks, have a great day. Check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the notification bell. Have a great day. So, it's Saturday afternoon. It's about 4 o'clock. The banging are my kids chopping wood for me. Neighbor diagonal behind my backyard is having a party, so I'm gonna try to film this later when it's not so noisy. But I literally came out here, got everything set up, sat down, was checking out like, you know, the light, which sucks now, and my neighbor started with the merengue, which I kind of really like. Like, I don't understand what they're saying, but it's very good music. I don't know that I listen to it in the car or at work, but you know, doing yard work back here. Anyway. That's the blooper. See ya. I'll film it later when it's quiet. Maybe tomorrow morning. Sunday morning. All right. See ya. That's it. When I set this up last year, I leveled them by the, the base. Uh, I put dirt and made everything was level. Every Made sure everything was level. Yeah. And so temperature swings. Yeah, that's, that's temperature swings. 